Hi there. In this video, I'm going to give you some advice on how to compose the introduction section of your psychology lab report. A good introduction section achieves four main objectives. The first objective is to put the study into some kind of context. And more often than not, that involves identifying the issue or the question that's being addressed by the study. The second objective is to provide a literature review of studies that are relevant to setting up or motivating the study that's being reported. The third objective is to establish continuity between the previous literature and the study that's being conducted. And that takes the form of establishing the precise rationale for why the study that's being reported has been conducted. And the fourth objective is to provide an overview of the characteristics of the study and also state the experimental hypothesis or hypotheses. So let's have a look at how writing a good introduction works in practice. I'm going to systematically address each of the four key objectives that are achieved in a good introduction in this video. And I'll provide timestamps to each of these objectives in the video description so you can easily find the information that you need. So let's have a look at how you go about introducing the issue or the question being addressed by your study. The first thing you should often do in this respect is provide a definition of the topic that your study addresses. And this is generally followed by indicating to the reader why this topic is particularly important and worthy of a study. Have a look at the text that currently appears on screen. Unfortunately, there is necessarily quite a lot of it. So you might want to pause the video at this point to give yourself a chance to read the text in full. Press play when you're ready to continue. Having read the passage of text, you'll notice that in the white font, the author is conveying to the reader what the particular issue being addressed by this lab report is. In this case, it's an increase in the incidence of pedestrians being killed when crossing the road. And they're following that up with the orange text, which is identifying why it's particularly important that research addresses this issue. And you can see the argument is being made that psychological research could have a role in identifying the factors that promote unsafe road crossing behaviour, and in doing so, could reduce the number of pedestrian fatalities associated with road crossing. So let's have a look at how you go about providing a review of the literature in your introduction section. The key thing to remember here is the purpose of providing a review of the literature isn't to overview all of the research that's been done on that particular topic, but rather to focus in on the specific research that motivates your own study. So let's have a look at how that works in practice. Have a look at the text that appears on the screen. Once again, you might want to pause the video here to give yourself the chance to read it properly and press play when you're ready to continue. So having read this passage of text, you'll probably notice that the author is beginning the review of the relevant background literature by kind of broadly referring to the literature that has addressed factors that are concerned with the safety of road crossing decisions but don't correspond with the actual factor that's being investigated in this particular lab report. And the idea of doing this is what you're effectively achieving is to put the most relevant literature that sets up and motivates your work into some kind of meaningful context. Once again, have a look at the text that currently appears on screen. Press pause to give yourself the chance to read this text in full and then press play when you're ready to continue. Now, of course, having reviewed some of the research that broadly addresses the particular issue associated with your lab report, you'll quickly want to move on to reviewing the literature that specifically addresses the factor or factors that you're investigating in your own work. In this case, these are the social determinants of unsafe road crossing. It goes without saying that the lion's share of the exposition or in your review of the background literature should be directed towards the studies that most directly motivate the work that you're reporting. Let's now turn our attention to how you go about establishing continuity between the literature you've reviewed and your own study. In other words, 
how you establish the specific rationale for your research. Once again, have a look at the text that currently appears on the screen. Press pause so you have a chance to read it in detail, and then press play when you're ready to continue. Having read this passage of text, you'll note that the author is doing two main things to establish the specific rationale for their research. First of all, in the white text, they're indicating to the reader how their research fits in with the existing research. In other words, what they're doing is trying to establish continuity between previous research and their own research. They follow this up in the orange text by indicating how their reported research responds to the previous research. In other words, they're stating the specific rationale for their study. Finally, let's have a look at how you provide an overview of your study and state your hypothesis or hypotheses. Have a look at the text that appears on screen. Once again, pause the video so you have a chance to read the text fully and then press play when you're ready to continue. Having read this passage of text, you can see three types of information being reported. In the white text, the author is indicating the type of study. In this case, it was of an observational design. In the green text, the author is indicating the variables that the study entailed. In this case, the two variables were, first of all, company, i.e. whether the participant crossed the road in the presence of an acquaintance or alone, and their crossing decision, i.e. whether the participant elected to cross the road when the red pedestrian do not cross light was illuminated. In the orange text, you can see the hypothesis for the study being articulated. In this case, the hypothesis was that there would be an association between the presence of an acquaintance and the safety of road crossing decisions. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to know when I post new content, just turn on the bell notification icon. Thanks very much. Thank you.